Welcome to the Immigrant Programmers channel. This is Pranav and in this video we are going to see why Airbnb dumped React Native and should you do the same. But before we get into that, you need to do me a favor. You need to press the like button on this video as hard as possible so that we, the immigrant programmers in Canada, can produce more and more content for you, can keep you up to date with the latest news, the latest tech, the latest programming languages, the latest updates, all the new features. And so if you need or if you are interested in that kind of content, hit the subscribe button as well. To fully understand why Airbnb moved away from React Native, we really need to see the full story here. It is very important to see the whole timeline to understand why React Native was actually chosen by a big company like Airbnb in the first place, why that decision was very costly for them in the end, but it was actually a very good decision when they took it. How the solutions that they, th they thought the React Native framework would provide them slowly and slowly started becoming a problem. And we will then see, after understanding all of that, then we will see if React Native should be chosen by you, should be dumped by you, and how you should decide between hundreds of frameworks. Well, not hundreds, but you know React Native, we have Ionic for Angular, we have Flutter, and so much more. So we actually need to understand the logic behind it. We actually need to understand the solutions and the problem these framework provides. And when should you even go for a framework like this? And when you should be making actual native apps like coding with Objective-C or C Sharp or coding with Java or Kotlin for Android. We will see all of those things in detail in this video. So stay tuned. Till the year 2012, Airbnb was just a website, just a React website. They didn't have any application, any mobile application whatsoever. But then they started thinking, they started realizing that, yeah, people actually booked the apartment or the house. They booked it using their laptops when they were at home. But let's say you went from Montreal in Canada to, let's say, London. Now, you might have booked the Airbnb, the BNB from your laptop. But once you are in London, if you need to access your booking, if you need to do any changes if you need to make another booking. Any person who's traveling the world, any person who's traveling to another city, they don't really have access to all their gadgets. They just have access to their smartphones. Hence, the team at Airbnb started realizing that we really need a mobile application because all the users all over the world, they will have to use, they will have to access the Airbnb application using their mobile phone and it made total sense for them to make applications for Android and for iOS. But let's see what happened. For the next four years, yes, believe me, for the next four years, they actually developed native code. They actually developed native applications in Android and iOS in Apple, but no one really knew that was happening. The React Native being chosen by such a big company like Airbnb, Airbnb and being such a big part of their team, there are numerous like rumors around it that people say that all of the Airbnb code is written in React Native, but that's not true at all. Actually, Airbnb started developing native applications and they did that for four years and they were very successful at it. And hence, when they started using React Native in 2016, only from 2016 to till date, only 20% of the code is written with React Native. So it's not like the whole code base. Airbnb has 800,000 lines of code. Not all of that is written in React Native. They were not that, uh, you know, they were not that immature to start using such a new framework into their well-established code base and well-established company. They only took 15 to 20% of the React Native code uh, in their code base, but still it became a problem in the end and we'll see soon enough. So have you ever used experiences in the Airbnb application? Well, that was the big reason React Native was actually introduced in the Airbnb applications. In 2016 or, or near around that time, Airbnb team thought that they will introduce experiences in the application, which will not only allow you to book 
BNBs, but will actually allow you to book some experiences or some events or some things that people might be interested in when they're going to visit a different city. And that feature actually triggered the conversation in the Airbnb team if they should continue developing very difficult but very efficient native applications or should they shift their focus on something like React Native, which could be done easily and which could spread their components into different applications like website, either Android and iOS, and they could reuse the components that they make at one place. Well, at that time, Airbnb didn't have a very big team. They had only 15 developers for Android and 15 for iOS. They had very small teams who were responsible for testing the application, for developing the application, for making rapid changes and keeping up to date with the actual website, which was actually developing very quickly. And that was actually becoming a big problem for them because they did not have the budget. They did not have the resources to hire hundreds of developers for both Android and iOS who really could not code the web, the website that Airbnb have. Now, Airbnb had two options. Either they could maybe take more money from somewhere, fund themselves and add more people to the native application teams, or they already had hundreds, hundreds of developers who knew React. The whole code for Airbnb is actually written in React. So they had hundreds of web developers. So they thought, why not use the web developers to create reusable components which could actually be used in React Native, which would in the end deliver near native experience in mobile applications and would make their lives much easier. Well, that decision, even at that time, had a lot of proponents and opponents. And this is really a very polarizing discussion, really, that if you should choose between frameworks like React Native, Flutter, etc., or you should actually write apps in uh, like native apps like iOS or Android. This is a discussion that has been be, that has been triggered not only in Airbnb, but in every other company, even the companies I work for, because there are advantages and disadvantages for both. Every company is small in the beginning. They choose frameworks like React Native, Ionic, or Xamarin, but in the end, they start becoming bigger. They want to use native features of mobile applications. Airbnb, in specific, they wanted to use the native maps very precisely and very efficiently because everything depends on maps for Airbnbs. Companies like Airbnb actually need those features. They needed things like geolocation, internationalization, and many other complex features that not all applications need. And that was the reason they now have a problem with React Native. And then this thought, well, in 2018, in 2020, this is not the best solution for them anymore because this has a lot of problems. Let's see what uh, solutions React Native give, gave them in the beginning and how they started becoming problems, what features are still running on React Native. We'll cover all of that in this video. And in the end, we still have to discuss if you should be choosing React Native or not. So stay tuned for that. Typically, there are two big reasons why companies like Airbnb actually go for frameworks like React Native and the two big reasons behind them are, number one, that they don't really have a lot of developers who can actually contribute to Android or iOS, but they do have web developers and they would like to reuse the same developers. <clears throat> they would like to reuse the same skill set they have without adding a lot of cost to their business. And they would be able to deliver a native application to the mobile, uh, to the mobile customers, to the mobile users. And that would be a very easy solution. At least that's what they think. The second big reason can be when companies do know that they won't need many native functionalities, when they know that even if they need some native functionalities, they aren't really very uh, extensive and just a few bridges would be able to handle them. Well, in those cases, in those cases, the companies are actually making a good choice. But in the first one, well, yeah, it's good for you in the beginning because it doesn't add a lot of cost. But as soon as your code gets more complicated, as soon as you make more components, as soon as you need more native features, it really starts becoming very stressful for the web developers to be able to maintain the Android and iOS applications. And the reason behind it is that it's not really a full switch. 
you can't really expect any web developer to just make native applications using frameworks like React Native. And then you also want the actual features of the native applications. Like for example, you need geofencing. For that, those features actually need you to write native code in C, Objective-C or Java or Kotlin. And they are not really the best thing and they don't have very the very best bridges. They don't have great bridges, sorry, for uh, frameworks like React Native, Ionic, etc. And when that happens, you as a company then expect your web developers to start coding in Objective C and Java. Well, that's obviously a big problem. But even though your developers start doing that now, the reason why you chose this kind of framework has actually collapsed. You thought that JavaScript developers would actually be able to make native applications without knowing anything else, but you already see that they need actually to learn three languages. If you actually want to grow, you actually are now looking at the problems. Your developers who were not trained in Java or Kotlin or etc are now actually asked to learn those frameworks, to learn those languages, which are completely different in many aspects. And then they have to maintain three types of code bases, not just one anymore. And that's a huge problem. The same thing happened with Airbnb. Even though they had the React Native applications, now those teams, whenever they wanted to have more features, they actually had to contact other teams in their company. They actually had to loan some users, loan some developers who knew native code and then they used to integrate them into their team they used to waste a lot of time on this because the person who is working in another team in another project doesn't really know what the team in react native is working on they just they don't really know what the problem where the problem was because sometimes yeah you ask for a very experienced android developer to come help in your team he asks his manager he the manager allows him to work for 10 days in your team Okay, that's great. You expect all your problems to go away. But wait, what happens? What happens is the Android developer spends three to four days just understanding the problem. After that, imagine if the problem was actually in the web, if the problem was actually in the JavaScript and not in the Android native code. Well, a senior developer in Android actually wasted a whole week when he doesn't really need to. And, and after, even after getting those, the help from the developer in the other team, if there aren't really any incentive for him or her to help the other team, well, it really starts making the company very political because now developers are expected to help other teams and not at any given time. Like they can be asked for help any time. Uh, there's no fix because you never know when the problem will occur. The problem can occur one day before the release. The problem can occur as a hot fix. The problem can occur in the very beginning stages of development. And those developers actually waste a lot of time just communicating back and forth in their whole team. Then there's another problem. React team calls them as landmines. What are landmines? Landmines are basically problematic areas, but they don't know where the problem started. They don't know if the problem was in JavaScript, was that in the reusable component that React uh, shifted to React Native. Or is that an Angular? Is that in sorry Android? I don't know why Angular is always on my mind. I'm using Angular like eight hours a day uh, when I work, so that's all on my mind. Forgive, forgive me about that. So they they are confused if the problem is in Android, iOS, or the React Native JavaScript code. And then what happens? Instead of running one debug environment, because whenever you have a problem, you usually use debugger, and then you are pretty uh, quickly and pretty easily able to find the problem. In this case, you need three debuggers, like one in the iOS, one in Android native code that the bridges uh, allow you to have in React Native, and then one in JavaScript. And you really need to spend hours and hours and sometimes even days as a team to, to track down small problems that would never exist if you were actually making native applications. And if all of those problems were not big enough, React Native has another problem, and that is it's a never-ending investment. It's always uh, developing. It's still only two years old, so it's still developing. It's still improving. It still has a lot of problems internally 
and the Facebook team are doing a really great job at developing it. It's an open source tool, which I love. So thumbs up for them. Thumbs up for this video as well. If you have gained any knowledge, if you like it, if you find this type of content entertaining, give me a thumbs up and thank you very much if you have already done that. If not, I know you'll do it. I trust you. You might be thinking, is React Native really that bad? And the answer is no, it's not bad at all. The reason behind all these problems is that Airbnb actually had to use some native features that not all companies, not all applications need to use. So if you are thinking if you should go with React Native or some alternative which might help you solving all these problems, well, there's no alternative. You have to write native code or you need to choose a framework like React Native or Flutter maybe. Flutter is basically Google's uh, response or Google's answer to native applications, but still it has the same problems. It has the same bridges. It has the same problems that React Native cannot overcome because native applications are actually the solution to use some of the hardcore native features and to gain full functionality, full access to the phone's features. So still, as of December 1st, 2020, there's no other solution, but there might be some solutions in the future. But as of now, you really have to write native code if you actually want to use native features. Now let's get to the most important part. Should you choose React Native or should you dump it like Airbnb did? Well, the answer is it depends. It depends on your application. It depends if your application actually need to use native features. If you just have a website that shows some analytics, etc., that shows some data that the user can interact from, well, the best thing that you could do as a company is use something like React Native. If you don't like it, use Ionic. If you don't like that, use Flutter. Use something, but don't write native code. It will be very expensive for you. You will actually have to hire many developers, both who work in Android, and Android developers typically can't code in Objective-C, or even if they can, they're not very good, and same goes vice versa. And it will be a very costly affair for you. But on the other hand, if you need to use native features, like you actually need to access the device's Wi-Fi, talk to Alexa, if you actually need to use geolocation, if you actually need to have really native control on everything in a mobile, don't even think about using React Native or, or things like that or frameworks like that and using bridges because the thing is, you will start simply, you will start fast, but soon enough, those solutions will actually start becoming a problem for you. So thank you for sticking till the end of this video. I really appreciate it. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, if you gained any knowledge from it. Subscribe to the channel if you would like to listen to more similar content. And don't forget to comment. I really want to know what framework would you choose? Would you choose React Native? Would you stop using things like React Native and start using uh, maybe native code? Let me know in the comments down below so that I can actually inspire myself to create my next project and decide if I should go native or if I choose a framework like this. Until next time.